question, well, what is marriage? What is marriage from God's perspective? Is it a piece of paper legally that states you're married from a legal perspective? Or is there something much more to it than that? And I do believe you're right. I do think God wants to bring us into a deeper understanding of what marriage is and what relationships are. Um, and therefore, I, I feel that what we've let it become is much less than God's intention, which I think is for two people to be completely one spirit, soul and body and entwined together with God in the middle. And therefore, there is this union, this bond of love, which which should be unbreakable. Now, obviously, we're not perfect people. So we obviously do things that do break that bond. So in one sense, it is a covenant. And that covenant has God in the midst of that covenant in which we are in love with one another. And that love is the bond that holds us together. Now, do you need a piece of paper to confirm that? Well, obviously, from church history, um, we don't have in the record of the New Testament what form of marriage they had, whether it was some ceremony, whether there were vows, whether there were it was done church before god in one sense it just says you know be married to one woman basically which is, i think is god's intention therefore you can't really look at the old testament and get a picture of marriage either because in the old testament they married many women you know and you look at you know many wives that some of them had well that i don't believe was god's intention but god didn't do anything to stop it either so you think okay well what's going on well i think that's man's version of what god intended because adam and eve eve came from adam and then adam and eve became one in union and fellowship in that they they cleave to one another and i think this is the key there is this union there is this cleaving so when you enter into marriage you're leaving the past behind you're leaving singleness behind you're leaving independence behind and therefore you're coming together in one heart one mind one spirit in a way which is cemented in the union of emotions of the heart but also in the union of the spirit choosing to surrender to one another in the spirit and also in the physical union coming together when you make love and you come together in the union of the flesh and I think from God's perspective, all three are required for him to see that there is a marriage. Now, I when my wife left me and we were we were separated and basically she has filed for divorce. So we're going through a divorce. Basically, when I went through that, I asked God, what is your view of my present state of relationship? Legally, I'm still married. Well, what God said to me is, in my sight, you're not married. You're not married because the covenant has been broken and you're no longer married. So I release you from the marriage bond. Therefore, you no longer need to be, see yourself entwined or one with the person as before. So for me, that was quite, in a sense, interesting and liberating. And it did cause me to ask questions. So can you be married in God's sight without being married in from the law's perspective or legally? Well, the answer is yes, of course, because the legal thing doesn't really make it so. It is in God's sight that makes it so. Now, if it's a covenant, there usually are some sort of declarations of covenant. So I'm not saying the, that people shouldn't make decrees and declarations and vows to one another. Um, and that can be done before God and that can be done publicly and that can be done in a legal marriage. None of that is in, in any way wrong, but I don't think it has to be limited to that either. Because as we know, having a piece of paper doesn't mean that you stay together inevitably um, and divorce happens even when you are legally married. It would be interesting to see of those who did come together in love and didn't have a legal piece of paper, but are still together how long they've been together and how whether the piece of paper made anything different to them obviously not if they're still together and they still love one another so love is the key and the the way of is unconditional love to one another and that means you're never going to do anything to harm any other and you're never going to do anything selfishly because it's all about that unconditional presentation of love but also it's important to be in love to actually feel love and to have that emotional connection of love in which you love each other 
Um, and I think that is something which God desires because he loves us and he desires that we love him. So this is sort of the picture. Now, I know in the old covenant, they did have the picture of God wanting to marry Israel. And that is described in the ketubah process of betrothal and then pre preparation for marriage and then consummation of marriage. And I have no issue with the concepts of that, the lakar, looking into the eyes in the garden, if you like, of our hearts and expressing desire for one another. You know, and then the other aspects of that, of making that declaration of desire to of love, but they didn't follow that through in the way they actually outwork marriage. And marriage in the Old Testament was more of a child abuse, parents selling off their children at the age of even twelve or thirteen um, to somebody else, and that's not what God intended. Marriage was not an arranged marriage. This was a this was two people falling in love and coming together in oneness. So hopefully that's giving a little bit of understanding. I'm looking at this actually in, in my own life at the moment of what is marriage, what is love, what is relationship. Um, so that in the future, you know, I will have God's perspective on it and not just the world's or the church's perspective on it. Just because the church says something doesn't make it right. And just as we have a convention that you're only married if you get legally married. That isn't right either. And I don't think God holds that in the same way as the church holds it. But God absolutely wants two people to be totally committed to one another, spirit, soul and body in a union of heart, mind and purpose to love one another unconditionally. That to me is what marriage really is. All of the things we've put around it from a cultural and from a religious perspective, I don't think are as important as the fact of what, how God looks at the heart and how God looks at people. Lust is not love. And we've got to separate the whole issue of lust from being in love. And that's quite difficult with hormones and everything else involved in, in that thing. But we can do it if we're coming together in, the, in within God in the midst of a relationship that brings people together into that love relationship so that that can grow deeper and stronger and they have just become more one with each other and with God in that intimacy of relationship. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.